Hey, this is Monica Hoyt, and this video is going to go over seven alternatives to defensiveness that will help your relationship. Now, this is a follow-up to my first video on defensive me defense mechanisms, examples of common defensive maneuvers that people use. These alternatives are key considering that defensiveness is one of the biggest predictors of divorce or the end of long-term relationships. Number one, be aware of your defensive maneuvers. Now the first thing is just to be aware of the nine common defensive maneuvers that I showed on first video of defense mechanisms, examples of the different ways we become defensive. Know them, see which ones that you tend to use, and notice when you start doing them out of habit. Just being aware is great even if it's after the fact. You will get better at stopping yourself in the future, but the first step is just to notice it as often as possible. The second thing you can do when you start to feel defensive or you feel accused of something is to paraphrase, paraphrase your partner's statement in a neutral tone. So the goal here is to acknowledge their feelings, don't rush to defend, sit still if you can, and offer alternatives to address the complaint. Now your partner will be disarmed by a rational response and you'll, they'll see you as a teammate, not as a sparring partner. Remember that you're actually safer when you lower your defenses because your partner will become your ally. Number three is to try to find the truth in the statement. This is hard because we tend to think that, you know, it's not true and that's why we're defending ourselves. But there will always be some basis of reality, even if small. So don't try to prove your partner wrong. Look for the ways they are right, even if it's uncomfortable. Number four is remember your power. Owning your part actually increases your options. So I know that I can actually have a greater influence over my partner and in my relationship by acknowledging that I may be wrong about certain things. You will be able to leverage that later. Number five is look for the hidden need. Is there something that you can do to meet that need? What is the deeper need behind what is being raised that's making you defensive? Um, if you can find that and address that, it, it diffuses the gridlock and allows you to focus on something constructive rather than just deflecting, which is not constructive. Number six is you can defend without being defensive. So in certain situations, you might want to plead your case or something like that along those lines without sounding defensive. So I want to point out that you can lower your defenses without letting yourself be attacked. So you can describe your reality and honor yourself by saying things like, no, that wasn't my intention, or that is not how I experienced it. So rather than countering, you're simply sharing your point of view. So even if the situation isn't emotionally safe to share your response, trust your own perception. Finally, if necessary, you can disengage, okay, because progress is not possible with elevated heart rates. So if you feel like you're getting caught, if you feel like you, you have to defend yourself, or you feel like all the ways that you're trying to um, use these alternatives are not working and you're getting pulled in and it's causing friction, it's okay to just take a break and walk away. Um, it's not going to do anybody any good to stay in gridlock. And finally, I just want to encourage you to continue practicing because practice, practice, practice really does make perfect. That is going to make the big difference. Old habits are hard to break, but they, they actually can be broken and new patterns created. So don't give up and remember that you will get so much back from making these changes. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.